give me newspaper. Buenos dias, Sr. Polsky. Mr. Polsky, why do you think your neighbor is Hitler? Those eyes. I will never forget those blue eyes. They didn't have brown eyes? But oh. It's a situation comedy. It's a sitcom. What we call in German situations comic. Or you can say it's a dark tragedy disguised as a situation comedy. You have two arch enemies with deep, deep hatred for each other's culture, and they're separated by a garden fence. Two old men who have a very strong past, don't trust each other, and it comes closer and closer. A wonderful, tragic sitcom. That's what it is. Silence, please. Sit. What? Your dog dug holes through fence, got into my yard, and messed with my roses. It's about a Polish Holocaust survivor who um, fled to South America, and he lives in a remote little house in the hills somewhere. And there is a house free next to him, and then some strange man moves in. Me? Polsky is afraid that the neighbor could be Hitler. I don't think I'm out of Hitler. You have to leave uh... <laughs> No, just more to the left. Okay, it works. Action. And now get out of here. Polsky has no power whatsoever. He has nothing. He has a clapped out old house in the mountains and he lives alone. The only person he ever sees is the mailman, and he abuses the mailman. And slowly but surely we reveal aspects of Polsky about where his personal tragedy and his personal pain. Sadly, his family was killed in the Holocaust, and every German accent has to do with Adolf Hitler. He survived, but the family didn't. I was speaking to my good friend, uh, Dmitry Malinsky, who became my uh, co-writer eventually, and he said, Let, let's make a film about this, uh, this conspiracy theory that Adolf Hitler hides in, in South America. I was thinking about my grandmother, who was a Holocaust survivor, and I, I, was, I was imagining how she would think about uh, Hitler being a, a person, and then it hit me. We, we should write a film about this, this character, the, the Holocaust survivor, who thinks that his neighbor might be Hitler. Mr. Herzog's yard is missing 24 square meters. The roses need to be pulled out and transplant them onto property which is exclusively used. No, you're not touching my roses. Polsky is having a wonderful garden uh, with a lovely rose bush, and the rose bush reminds him of his wife. They are fighting who owns the roses and who owns the land. Is so uh, obsessed with watering his black roses. Get off my property! I need to water my roses. Get out of here! Hosky is a gift beyond your wildest dreams. And the opportunity for me to be able to show aspects of, 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 of my talent that I, I rarely get a chance to show was, um, was something really exceptional and very, very exciting. Polsky is a grumpy, obnoxious guy, and David, he's, he's a great human being. And we start the uh, rehearsals and the shoot, and suddenly David becomes this, this old, uh, or half-dead guy, obnoxious and very, very irritating. But then after a week or so, I realized he, he actually became Polsky without telling me. I like my partner, David. He's a very good actor. And I felt that we worked very well together. And the good thing is how we meet. We both have doors next to each other, and we have a little thing to open up. So the eyes, you can only see the eyes of the other person. So, and if you don't like them anymore, you just close it. Do you have coffee? Coffee? Wait here. 
Remember when we were in the rehearsal room, tiny rehearsal room in Medellin uh, on the first day, and I was waiting for Udo to arrive, and the door opened up, and in walked this devastatingly handsome, charismatic, dangerous kind of individual who was like a, he's like a big kid. He's, he's, he has, Udo has never lost his inner child. His inner child is alive and well and kicking. And I fell in love with that inner child. He just likes to touch me. Yes. He changes the microphone five times a day, just a little, you know what I mean? Our makeup artist had to do one hour a day. And because it was all glued to my skin, so I couldn't eat. So I did only eat things I didn't have to chew. So I had soup and things good. I feel good, feel healthy. Good evening. I understand you haven't stopped harassing Mr. Herzog? I came to water my roses because you didn't. The roses you took from me. We didn't take your roses. The law did. My name is uh, Carlton Brunner. And uh, I'm the um, lawyer of Mr. Herzog, who is the German neighbor. You have to do this. What I say, müssen Sie machen. I'm a bit controlling, Mr. Herzog. Herr Herzog? Herr Herzog? <coughs> Was zum Teufel geht hier vor? Wie sehen Sie denn überhaupt aus? Haben Sie getrunken? David and Udo are so different in character and bring to the screen such different uh, qualities. David is reflective, while Udo is uh, intuitive. So it's so different. David really plans every move and thinks of it, and Udo just brings personality and goes with it. And it, it was really beautiful because both are great equally, but in a different way, so we have such two different uh, uh, main characters. Action! You son of a bitch! <laughs> I was worried a little bit because we're using two actors that are over 70. They were never tired, they were always in a good mood. There were a lot of physical challenges uh, and there were long hours and the, the heat as well. Uh, we had fight scenes where, and we're I'm rolling in the mud, we're in the rain. Bitten by dogs, uh, going through fences, climbing ladders. Tell me what I have to do, if I have to jump, if I have to get on my knees, I will do it. I'm here for the film. I like to work with animals. It's very difficult to work with animals, animals and children. I had to lie on the ground, covered in sausages, covered in liver, covered in gravy, covered in everything to attract this dog. And it just goes woof, 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 woof and runs away. Since the film tells the story of two neighbors, we needed two houses. And since one of them is surveilling and spying after the others, we needed a lot of angles from windows to windows, from windows to port, in order, in order to tell the story right. We couldn't find two houses that really gave us everything we needed. And then Diego, our co-producer, said, why won't we build the houses? And that's what we did. We designed exactly what, what the director and the DOP dreamt of, having all the right angles, and we just built it. It was amazing to us, uh, because within like two months, those two houses were ready to be used for our production. Well, when I was first told we were going to uh, Colombia, I jumped for joy. I thought, yes, for a start. It's a country I've never been to before. People here are so wonderful. Everyone smiles at me, everyone is friendly. I think we have a cast and a crew and a production team that are just absolutely superb. They're committed to this project. They're passionate about this project. They'll work their asses off for this project and they believe in it. It's also fascinating because it's a mixture of uh, different nationalities. This is also what makes it interesting. There's Colombia, there's Argentina, there's Israel, there's Poland. We have nine different nationalities, so you have nine languages, you have nine cultures, and we're all coming together in the hills above Medellin to make a movie. Leon, what is the shot, honey? So the idea is that this is the first time that you're in the city, you're overwhelmed by this. So let's see your energy, how you want to move. Basically, your trajectory could, should be something like this. So let's see your uh, how you do this. 
Uh, we have two 70 years old uh, actors, big actors, and when they met me, they were like, oh my God, how can he handle both of us? The experience with, with Leon was very difficult in the beginning. Here you have a director who has spent 10 years writing and creating this wonderful story. That's his dream movie and he has been working on it for a very long time and he had all the characters already uh, formed in his head. The first two weeks were very, very hard for, I think, for three of us. Certainly Udo wanted to kill him and if he didn't kill him first, I would have been right there, say, right behind him. He comes and says, well, it was very, uh, very good, but a little correction, just a little one. And I say, okay, go ahead, what is the correction? As I started understanding them, I think they, they, they understood me and, and it started working um, like beautiful, like perfect. I really did want to kill him in the first week and I'm a pacifist, but uh, now I love him and I'm very fond of him. And I really, really hope for his sake that are above anyone else's that this film is a huge success because he thoroughly deserves it. Cut! Corte! Ladies and gentlemen! <laughs> it is a ride! I hope audiences are going to love it. It's very, very different, it's very special, and it's a human movie. And I really look forward to seeing it. It's a story about friendship. It's a story about loneliness, it's a story about an old age. It's a story about how strongly we need to be humans, no matter what we lived and no matter what we lost. You will discover a lot of new things which I'm not allowed to talk. And I have a good feeling. I just hope it, it, it has worked. Um, and that's what I'm excited about. See if, yeah, I pulled it off. I pulled off Polsky. That would be a great place. Take a, take a, take a. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you? Say good morning before you show the camera. <laughs>